Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Muhammad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a telephone call from His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq Al Saeed of Amman. The two leaders exchanged congratulations on Eid al Fitr, wishing the Arab and Islamic nations many happy returns on the occasion and further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely. The cabinet extended their best wishes to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, to His Royal Highness and to the citizens of Bahrain on the occasion of Eid Al Fitr. The cabinet highlighted the extent of cooperation and coordination between the executive and legislative authorities and their complementary work towards further progress and development for the benefit of the kingdom and its citizens. On the occasion of the issuance of the Royal Order adjourning the third session of the fifth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils, the Cabinet extended gratitude to both councils for their roles in contributing to further national efforts and supporting citizens. The Cabinet then emphasized the importance of following all precautionary measures and getting vaccinated as both have a vital role in supporting frontline workers as well as patients. The Cabinet then extended their sincere condolences to the families of the relatives of fallen servicemen, Corporal Ammar Ibrahim Isa, who died from injuries sustained in an operation to counter illegal fishing and wished a speedy recovery to those injured. In this regard, the cabinet affirmed that measures are being taken by His Royal Highness to be bring justice to those involved in the accident. The cabinet expressed its deep concern following the violence that has taken place in Jerusalem. The cabinet called on the Israeli authorities to de-escalate tensions and stressed the need to preserve the historical identity of Jerusalem to avoid a regional drift towards instability. The Cabinet approved the following memorandums. A memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee regarding the unified calendar of events in Bahrain for the year 2021 with the aim of aligning organizational efforts and providing the necessary logistical needs and support for these events. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior regarding the signing of an MOU between the Information and E-Government Authority in Bahrain and the Saudi Authority for Data and Artificial Intelligence and a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's responses to 10 proposals and law proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed the following topics. A memorandum from the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications regarding air services agreements between Bahrain and Bosnia and Herzegovina. And a memorandum from the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism regarding CR key performance indicators, which showed an increase in the number of commercial registrations issued during the first quarter of 2021. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met remotely with the Vice President of the Supreme Judicial Council and President of the Court of Cassation, Councillor Abdullah bin Hassan Al Bainin. His Royal Highness highlighted the role of the judiciary in the promotion of justice and preservation of rights in a way that contributes to the Kingdom's goals of comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of further strengthening the Kingdom's legal system through complementary cooperation between the executive legislative and judicial authorities. He praised the efficiency of the Bahraini judiciary, stressing the importance of continuing to support the development of its divisions by investing in the development of its human capital. The Council expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness, noting his continued support for the Supreme Judicial Council and its commitment to progress initiatives that support the Kingdom's continued development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a circular on Eid Al Fitr holiday. The Kingdom's ministries and public institutions will remain closed on the day of Eid Al Fitr and the two days that follow. The circular stated that if any of the three Eid days coincides with an official holiday, an extra day will be given in lieu. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday chaired the meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, where he expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the honorary president of the foundation, for his directors and continuous support of the foundation's humanitarian work and His Majesty's support of orphans, widows, and all needy groups in Bahrain to provide a decent living standards for all. His Highness affirmed that the Kingdom's leadership prioritizes citizens and that Bahrain has taken 
making great and important strides at all levels to occupy important and advanced positions in the world in the field of humanitarian work through its humanitarian role in addition to its great role in protecting the citizens' health and combating the pandemic. His Highness commended the humanitarian gestures and role of His Majesty towards other brotherly and friendly countries, which reflects Bahrain's stances towards them. Hailing the support the foundation receives from the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He also praised the efforts of the members of the Board of Trustees, Executive Management and all the members of the Foundation. His Highness also directed to continue to work within the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King and to take important steps to implement His Majesty's directives to continue humanitarian work with creativity and kindness and to provide distinguished and comprehensive care to orphans, widows and all deserving groups in the Kingdom, in addition to easing the suffering of the people in other countries. The Secretary General of the RHF, Mustafa Sayyid, praised the support of His Majesty the King to the families of the Foundation and to the Foundation's work, commending His Highness's leadership of the Foundation. During the meeting, they reviewed the latest developments implemented by the RHF within the Royal Directors for Strategic and Investment Projects inside and outside Bahrain, in addition to providing assistance and services to orphans, widows and various deserving groups in Bahrain. They also followed up on what has been accomplished within the Fin Nakhir campaign. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, delegated the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to attend the conclusion of Nasser bin Hamad Premier League for the sports season 2021 and 2022. At the end of the match, His Highness Sheikh Khalid crowned Rafa'a Club team as the winner of Nasser bin Hamad Football League. It's been a long, long season. Everybody contributed to, to this achievement. We have uh, won the His Majesty King Cup, and now we won the league. It's, uh, it's an amazing achievement. We've done it in three years, two times in 2019 and now. And it's, uh, it's been hard work from everyone. And I'm happy and I congratulate Everyone. Council of Representatives Speaker Fozi Yazena held a virtual meeting with the Chairman of the High Level Advisory Group of the Interparliamentary Union on Combating Terrorism and Violent Extremist, Extremism, Dr. Reynold Lopatka. Zena said that the vision and directives of His Majesty the King have formed a distinguished civilized approach and contributed to high international achievements. The accomplishments were made possible through specific humanitarian and global projects, initiatives and programs based on promoting tolerance and coexistence, rejecting terrorism and combating violence and extremism. The speaker hailed the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in taking all measures, decisions, laws and legislation in combating terrorism and extremism. She expressed the willingness of the Bahraini Parliamentary Division to host the meetings of the International Parliamentary Committee. The speaker praised Bahrain's progress in confronting terrorism and countering extremism, enacting laws to protect society and youth from the effects of the repercussions of such platforms, and launching awareness-raising initiatives and programs to protect the society and boost its cohesion, and stre strengthening national identity and the sense of belonging and loyalty. Lopatka congratulated Zainal on her election as a representative of the Arab Parliamentary Group of the High Level Advisory Group of the Interparliamentary Union, stressing that her presence in the group is an advantage to international parliamentary action. The two sides reviewed ways to strengthen international parliamentary cooperation and to coordinate international parliamentary positions to support the fight against terrorism and extremism. The Shura Council held its weekly meeting remotely yesterday, presided over by its chairman Ali Saleh. The council approved Decree by Law 26 of 2020, amending Article 173 of Decree by Law 54 of 2002 on the internal regulations of the Representatives Council. A proposal on establishing the public authority for food security was also approved. The council approved a draft law amending Article 1 of Decree by Law 27 of 2015 on commercial registration. The Moon Sighting Committee will meet tomorrow at the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs headquarters to receive news and testimonies from Bahrain and the Islamic world about the birth of the Shawwal Crescent, signaling the end of Ramadan. In a statement today, the Council urged the public to report their testimonies to the panel. 
the Lebhair housing project is on track with 99% of the construction and infrastructure works already completed. Housing Minister Balsam Al Hamar inspected the project in the Southern Governorate, accompanied by Parliament Services Committee Chairman MP Ahmed Al Ansari. He said that the project is proceeding according to the time plan with the aim of completing the construction and distribution of the units to the beneficiaries at an accelerated pace. He said that the Bhair project falls within the work plan to provide 25,000 housing units as stipulated in the government's action plan. The minister expressed the ministry's keenness to review the demands of applicants who are nominated to benefit from this project. The first phase of the Bahir project includes 227 housing units in addition to many services and facilities that will serve the beneficiaries. The government of the Kingdom of Bahrain announced that it will send medical aids and oxygen equipment to Pakistan to help the country in facing the pandemic, which is based on the cabinet's decision. This support comes within the framework of the strong cooperation and coordination between the two countries. Bahrain affirmed its firm stances towards Pakistan, which reflects exceptional bilateral relations and affirmed keenness to support international efforts to overcome the pandemic. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 797,181 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 578,786 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination.